Hello, and welcome to another episode. I'm Lord Dragon Tree, and today we're playing some Songs of Six. This is just going to be an example um, demo of what to do. I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit. So I'm going to walk through the uh, start of everything, the races, the maps, etc., etc. So you got the Cretonians. They're good at farming. Um, you can just read off this, that it is accurate to what they are. Um, wood structures are great for the beginning. Dorians, think of them as dwarves. Mining and refinement in battle, orcs, uh, humans are humans, and these guys are lizardy type stuffs. So we're gonna go ahead and start with Cretonian, um, because you're gonna be starting farming. Farming is gonna be a big deal uh, throughout the game. You're gonna want to have roughly 50% of your population on food production. Um, it'll change a little bit once you have technologies up and running, but 50% uh, is a good starting point. Uh, you got your different map types. Um, small is still a very large map, and the technical goal of the game is to conquer everything. Um, so it's a very large map anyways. Uh, latitude, um, you can choose whether you want it to be northern or southern, or normal, raids, yeah, um, be kind of crazy. You put it to 0%, I'm going to put it at 10 just so we have them. This map is just basically a land map. They are randomly generated, so, you know, here we've got England. But, when we load it up, it's actually not going to be pure England. There are randomizations involved for each of the different types of maps. So, you won't play the same map twice. Uh, it means you can have the same general shape, but variations so here after you've started you get to choose titles that you unlock throughout so for instance uh, breaker of chains it's uh, give, gained by freeing slaves executions selling stuff and so on and so forth uh, ruler negotiator leader crafter and master of bargains so I've uh, played this fair bit uh, so I've unlocked these. These are um, bonuses to settle, is a bonus to your starting resources. Um, bartering, obviously, for trade. And these are stackable. So bartering and negotiator means I've got plus 50 for that, which is great. All right, and as you can see, this is the map. It is roughly England-shaped. Definitely not England, though. All right, then you can choose different places uh, to start. Um, you can balance it out how you like it. Uh, for instance, right here, I like it because it's got a little bit of everything. Uh, you definitely want to try and have a little bit of everything, in my opinion. Um, but it's not the end-all, be-all if you don't. Um, clay is a good option to make sure you've got because you need it for making beer and drinks and all that pottery. Um, to make pottery, which you need to make drinks. Uh, coal is used in a whole bunch of different industries, like bakeries. And you can get it off your forests, but using charcoal ears, I don't care for it too much. All right, so what I'm going to do is, oh, we could have some fun here. It's not a very good spot, but it's fun. That could be interesting. I'm not going to pick it because there is a settlement right there. So I'm going to look for one that doesn't have a settlement. I suppose they all probably do. Yeah. So uh, we could go in here and be surrounded by mountains. Uh, but the fertility is abominable. Uh, so growing stuff is going to be difficult. Doable, but difficult. It would be kind of cool. Uh, but since this is a... Uh, Demo, well, not demo, a uh, learning map. We're going to go look for somewhere that's a little bit more beneficial. Okay, so this has got a lot of coal, iron, a little bit of everything. And yeah, so this is a temperate climate. Not a lot in the way of forests, but that'll be fine. So we're going to go here. Uh, it's got some bonuses to productions. You can't build the uh, lizards or the aurochs. Uh, aurochs are to the north. And, uh, yeah. 
So some things are limited depending on where you choose to go. So once that's you've selected your starting place, you will then select your second starting place. I can't think of a better term. Uh, place to uh, found your town within the map. So uh, we have our map. Um, the red indicate buried-ish resources. So here we have clay. Uh, you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Here we've got stone, diamonds, more stone, there's some coal, and you can dig out these uh, areas to get stuff. We've got stone. Where is the iron ore? More clay and stone. Uh, if you right click on the map, it'll show what resources are in the area. So right click here it shows some wild vegetables grains fruits cotton etc uh green on the map is your sicilian sicilian ore and that's more clay i could have sworn oh and uh lots of clay a lot more than i thought all right let's see if I can find where... Oh, there it is. So here is our little bit of ore. Okay. Not a lot of ore on this map. Uh, you will be able to import, export all the, the stuffs that you need, but... Alright, so... I'm thinking we're going to start here. It's not very defensible, but this map is not great for defense. We could we could build in here. The downside is we'd have to go a good ways to get fish. But I suppose if we dig through the mountains and put up some gates, we could do that easily enough. Um, you know what? Screw it. Let's just start here. Yay, new level. All right, so uh, you'll start. Here's your uh, starting number of people. You got 65 of your base chosen race, which is great. Um, I would recommend pausing right off the bat because there's a few things you're going to want to do. First off, food and storage. So to go here, uh, these are the tabs where you'll check, you, you pick your stuffs. Um, the in-game wiki is good for getting some basic info, but here is what you're going to want to do right off the bat. So you'll go down to this tab, go to logistics, and you'll have your warehouse. Warehouses are built for storing stuff. Now here is a trick that I've learned. So uh, when you select an area, you can put the walls in yourself, or you can have it automatically, and it will build around the room. So, if I go from edge to edge, like this, puts the walls on the outside. Not what you want. You can right-click to undo. Um, so, what you'll want to do is measure two away from whatever building you're looking at, and slap it down here. So, right now, I've got it at six width. I think you can go up to you can go up to uh, oops, sorry, you can go up to seven width without getting the yellow. Yellow means an increased um, upgrade cost, which is not great. Um, usually it's just better to avoid that altogether. Uh, I'm going to go up here, seven across, and this is gonna be a smaller storage. Uh, I kinda of just wanna have it leveled down here. So you can rotate with R and E and Q to expand. Most things can be expanded. There's quite a bit of expansion options. So, and then if you want to expand after you're done, you can go click expand room or shrink room. Shrink room is also used for improving the, like putting pillars in. Took me a while to figure that one out. All right, there we go. And then you'll need to put doors on. Um, I like putting doors at all the corners 
just to make it easier for people to get in, especially accessing things like your warehouses. Um, next, you're going to want to go over to Agriculture and Hunter. I know it's weird that Hunter is in here, but I always... I, I guess that's just what you do. Then build a small hunter cabin. 7x7 seven seven is good. Put the workbenches in. You'll have to shrink it down because, well, that's just how it goes. Uh, put four of them in there. Efficiency starts at 50%. Auxiliary things are how you boost the efficiency up. And me being me, I'm just going to slap it in there. It's a little more co It's not cost effective. Oops. <laughs> Got to put doors on, otherwise you can't get in and out. Derp. Uh, I don't know if people run over these. I don't test it. I just make the doors so it looks nicer. Uh, just out of habit. And then you've got your initial food. Usually, if you start near water, you're going to want to do a hunter and a fisher. I did not, so yeah, you can kind of see how that goes. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is decide which directions you're going to want to build stuff. So, uh, industries produce a, an amount of noise. Uh, and it's cumulative. So if you have 10 industries over here, and stick a house in there, it's going to be noisy. You're not going to sleep well. What I like to do is build out my industries in one direction. So since we've got... Let's see. That's going to be fun. Um, I'm going to be using a lot of wood and clay. So we'll build industries over to the left. We'll build farming up. Kind of just set this area as farms for now, I guess. And then industry, I'm sorry, and then housing will be more over this direction for now. Uh, with the exception of this, which, you know, we're going to need stone, so it'll be. All right, so resources. So it doesn't show any resources here. Stuff that's in your room, for lack of a better term, your throne room, uh, is not going to show up in here. This shows only the warehouse stuff. So once the warehouse is built, great. You're good to go. Uh, next up, you'll want to fell trees, clear rocks, harvest, etc. I'm just going to do some clear all. It just it automatically does what you're looking for. And I'm going to do this big area right here because we're going to need the the wood and stone and everything to uh, beep, 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 beep. okay the wood and stone to get um, everything built and stored. So you can change the speed. One is pause, two is a regular, three, four, etc. Nice and simple. All right. So um, this is where most of your stuff is going to be. This is for fortifications, fences, torches. I don't use torches a whole lot. It's mostly used for your crime rate, which isn't a big issue starting off, but you'll want to get on top of that fairly quickly. Also, before I forget, um, this is your population. You have your immigrants. It'll show down here immigranty stuffs. Uh, you can hold over. So you got immigrants waiting for immigrants. It's dependent on your fulfillment and expectations. So get this. If you get basically if you get this bar full up, you'll have more immigrants coming in. And immigrants are how you grow your population starting out. Um, you can author change the authorizations for immigrants here. Um, I always just uh, go to each race and max it out. All you have to do is move the slider over. This gets you the important resources of jobs, minions, etc. Because right now I have 63 people in my workforce. That's because there's some people already on jobs in here. Um, also, you can adjust the number of employees in an area. And if you hold over, it will show you that there's no storage for the production of that building, which is really nice because the warehouse isn't completed yet. So they're not going to be able to do anything. So we'll let this roll a little bit. Gather all the resources we need. And here we can see we got people doing the, the building. Um, before I forget, you can also go into infrastructure and click on workstation. A workstation will cause people to build stuff in the area. So I can just slap it right there doesn't require any build time. It's just a designation. So the radius... Oop, I did not do that one right. Okay. As you can see here, this is the radius. You can adjust it so it covers more or less of an area. 
I'm just gonna zap it all the way up so we've got five people doing the building at all times. Because we don't want everybody just disappearing and going and grabbing stuff. Now, some jobs may not be done. Um, because, hey, look, ripe. So only during the summer times. Uh, before I forget, we are also going to immediately go over to getting farms down. Um, I usually start off with uh, farms are going up. Right. So we'll start the farms here. So an 8x8 square requires one person to work it. If you go up to the max uh, that I've been able to get for like a perfect balance of width and height, which is 45 by 45, go anything else, it, sh it knocks it out. This is exactly 31 workers, um, which starting out is a huge number of workers, but... Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. We need 203 veggies. And we're going to do this now because you also have to have uh, the edibles to to put it in. So we're going to look for some vegetable locations. Lots of grain. Fruit. What do we have down here? Any veggies? Got some veggies. We'll harvest those. What about over here? Ah, here we go. More veggies. More veggies. More veggies. More veggies. A lot of grain. That's good. So, hopefully, we'll be able to find everything we need get the field planted. All right. We'll just boost this up. It will take a while, but if we get this in while it is still spring, we'll have a full crop of food coming in. And honestly, we'll have half our peeps. Oops. Let's pause. Uh, so here, we're going to just go ahead and add in some meats. Uh, this one does a little bit of everything. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So meat, leather, egg... This will deplete over time, so you'll want to move away from that as quickly as you can. Uh, we'll be building more warehouses uh, relatively quickly. This is just to get everything started right off the bat. Uh, there is deterioration in the game, so you will want to make sure that, you know, you can store everything you need. Uh, we're going to want to put some in there. Some in there. I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. Okay. Alright. So we'll boost these up a little bit. Uh, keep in mind that when you make a warehouse, you can copy it. So you can hold left control to build another warehouse, which means you customize it. Left shift means it copies it exactly. That includes its uh, resource stacks. So keep that in mind if you're just building it and slapping it down. Sometimes it's faster to manually build one if you're going to be customizing a whole bunch of things. Um, otherwise, you just got to go through and readjust the sliders. Now, if you're building a bunch of just generic... Oh, I need to have storage for everything. That works. I don't do that just because it seems less efficient to me, but say levy. All right, clear it out and okay. It's cleared. Hopefully, we'll have people grabbing what we need, all the farm stuffs. It's going to take a hot minute to gather the materials. What are you doing? Idling? Why are you idling, my friends? Don't be idle. Okay. 
Well, let's go see if we can convince them to harvest more stuff. Did they just eat it all? No idea. All right, well, while we're there doing that, we're going to go ahead and build a dirt road. We've got a few different options for building stuff. So you can do squares. Uh, you can do circles. Lines are great if you realize... Oh, by the way, when you click on roads, this highlights the routes people are taking. So you can use that to help figure out where you want roads, fences to guide people to roads, etc., um, especially with like graveyards where you're not supposed to trample. Um, so it can be of use. I like building it between the boxes and everything else. Also, roads are not permanent, so if you need to get rid of it, you can. Also, to back out of most things, you can just right-click. May have screwed this one up. All right. Well, the other thing we can do is import export. So we're going to import. Uh, you can change the size of the imports, uh, but I'm going to import um, veggies. So that way we can hopefully have all the veggies that we need. We've got some rations, so we're not going to starve just yet. And we've got uh, meat and some other things coming in. But I'm going to import vegetables as soon as this is done. Um, it does cost money. So you, your money is usually spent on either resources or mercenaries. There is also an inflation mechanic, but that usually doesn't affect too badly. All right, we're going to import this. You have the import global level, so um, it will import as uh, to one hundred percent. You can set it to lower levels as well. So depending on what you've got, it will adjust accordingly. So building this road has finally gotten people to go down a little bit further. Uh, we are going to build this road even further down because I know there was some stuff that I wanted harvested down there. And hopefully we'll get this thing built. There we go. Stuff is coming in. So um, as you can see our money went down and we have Roughly a little a little over half slash two-thirds of the veggie farm. Um, I did spend a little bit too long getting that up and running. It probably would have made more sense if I'd made it half this size, but people will survive and not overly concerned about that right now. Um, here's a number of jobs we have. We don't have many people assigned to workforces, so, you know, say la vie. Um, right now, the biggest slowdown we've got is the civics. So, civics is a little bit weird. Services, or service, is where your housing is. So, right now, we've only unlocked dormitory. It's very small scale housing. Uh, great for putting a roof over people's heads, basically. You will need to keep up with the housing um, types, I should say. So, once you've unlocked, you know, flat houses, which are kind of apartments... Um, you'll still need dormitories, as if you look in services, it wants apartments, beds, and chambers. So this is the flat houses, this is the dormitories, and this is the chambers. So as you can see, we've got nothing filled out there. Uh, so you'll need to have a little bit of everything. Uh, before I forget, we need to add in a janitor. A janitor keeps things running. Um, so everything has a little bit of degradation. Or we'll have a degradation eventually. Janitor is what you do to keep that up. To keep it from deg degrading. Uh, wells are your initial hygiene mechanism. You'll want to make sure you got have a couple of those. Additionally, in infrastructure, sorry, in civics, come on, you've got your hearths. It's just kind of a stay warm, stay happy kind of mechanic. Uh, these do require some stone. They put stone 
what do you call it? Around them? This is this is walking areas. Stone paths. Sorry, brain is not working well. Perfect. Uh, so as you can see, there's um, a little bit of wear and tear, and so your one employee can keep up with that. This is on auto-employ. Uh, I will say for janitors, I think auto-employ does a pretty good job. Um, it's not perfect, but it does a pretty good job. The fertility on this is abominable. So what we can do, if you want to get really crazy, you can dig canals. See, uh, here we can look at the fertility. 53% goes up closer you are to water. The further you are from water, lower that fertility goes. We're not near water, so our fertility stuff is okay in this area, not so great in this area. So what I'm going to do is dig a canal. On this top side. And eh, we're going to skip that for now. We could go over to... Whoop, over to here and drag it on over but we're not going to do that just yet we've got resources we're not overly concerned about uh, the next thing we're going to do is build a uh, let's see let's get our civics going so services dormitories we're going to build it over this way it, they're not going to be happy with that but I'm not too worried all right, so let's calculate. So down one over one. Move it over and down to seven. Oops, I miscalculated. One, two. Right, I knew that. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, let's start it here. Let's see, it's one, two, three, and then one, two. Uh, let's try this again. I have a system that I usually use, but I can't remember what it is. Oh, wait. Knickknacks. So, and we've got coziness, but you gotta have up. There we go, that's right. So then we just slap in the doors here. And boom. Now, we've got places for people to sleep. Uh, we will want to keep an eye on our wood. We've got plenty of wood right now, but it spoils 30% per year. Um, eventually, we will get to our research tree, and there's uh, right here, spoilage goes down, which is kind of important because 30% of your wood goes away each year. Painful. As you can see, uh, meat also goes down. Um vegetables, bread, and uh, grain is a little bit less, so it's a very, very, very good staple food. Uh, fish also spoils, so keeping an eye on your spoilage rates, making sure that you have enough food year to year is super important. Um, as you can see here, we've got a load of 96.8%, so um, we can hold 36 people in here. We're going to need more of these. Uh, we're not going to build over this any more than we already have because we need that stone. Um, another fun thing about this building stuff. Hey, look, we just saved space. Uh, it may not seem like much. I have filled up one of these maps. Yeah. Uh, your grain fields will take up this whole area eventually if you're looking to play... Um, a massive civilization because let's pause it for real quick let's go out and take a look at the world so we are mistis right yes that's us we are right here this is a neighboring settlement and we can raise armies so can they um, armies take a while to develop um, and you'll want to have the different techs involved for that. But eventually you'll have armies, and uh, there is a really cool battle system um, in this. Battling is obviously not the primary goal, or primary focus of the game, but it is interesting. 
and if I get to that point, I'll probably make a second episode, kind of showing off some of the battle systems eventually, maybe? Um, otherwise, <laughs> you may just want to hunt up something with that, because battles are not regular. Um, they're somewhat uncommon-ish. Alright, let's uh, turn the imports off for now. We've got all the we've, we've got plenty of food, um, so that's great. The fertility on that kind of sucks. So um, let's build one more of these. There we go, and then I'm gonna build an eatery. Oops, come on. Now, good thing about eatery is it doesn't take up any of the important stuffs slots. There we go. Seven and down. All right, storage. So the storage is basically your tables for people. Uh, we can do nice and long ones here, and then some shorter ones down here. And that will give us plenty of access points. And we'll allow people to get their eatery happiness. As you can see, um, just doing that has boosted up things immensely. Um, or it did for a minute. Um, I didn't calculate this out. Okay, there we go. Uh, once that's done, people will be a lot happier. Uh, additionally, so let's pause it again. Pop this up. So another way to quickly make sure your people are happy-ish, go to work priorities, and you have the option of setting it so that their skill, uh, happy fulfillment, or just default are on. Each race has different pluses to different types of things. So if I go here, it actually boosted up their skill and fulfillment, which is fantastic. The giants, um, same thing. The Dendorians. Same thing. Do -do 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 -do. The humans. I'll go over some of the other work stuff in a moment. All right. So. Let's go over to our minions work. So you do have a retirement age, and retirement age actually gives you several points in um, stuff. Anyways, so if you set this to 100%, then they'll work half their lives. Um, I never move that up until I've gotten things pretty well established because, again, a little bit of... You know, stuff we're going to get done. Uh, equipment's important. You'll want to get your uh, clothing factories up relatively quickly, but it's less important than making sure people have places to eat and sleep and clean themselves. So those are important things to do, but it's not the end-all be-all if you have to wait a little bit. Uh, so now that we've gotten some of the basics done, I'm going to go ahead and get a... Another, why did I put, oh yeah, I put that there because it's, it's just good to have the import-export nearby. So we're going to slap in another warehouse. Uh, you can actually put, whoops, come on, oh, let me click on that. You can put employees in here. They will uh, then be designated haulers for that specific warehouse. So it can be really good idea idea to have one or two in some of your critical warehouses if you don't have if you're if you're running into issues with your workforce or stuff being out in the fields and not being picked up it can be a good idea to grab that um while we're here i am going to go ahead and get a not that a woodcutter up and running so you want to have a little bit of space for your woodcutter materials uh, this is also a 45 by 45 max. Uh, you don't have to have it at 45 by 45. I'm going to do it at 45 by 45. Um, actually, we need to get... Oof. 
a, whoops, come on, a carpenter for our furniture. Because the woodcutter upgrades require furniture. I do actually make these ridiculously long. Uh, there's a reason for that. So I have calculated that a good way to get a double length is you um, go here and here. And then, oops, I can press buttons correctly. Let's see, space, space. Actually, does this? Oh, hang on, I forgot. I forgot. I learned this. I, I learned this trick in my last section. Okay, so, um, right. Then here we go. So actually, um, a six by this, whatever it is. Let's find out. So, a thirty-three by six is fantastic for productions that use the these two because there's a few different facilities that use a workbench of this style and the auxiliary station of this style so the six by sorry the six by 33 is perfect to get everything you need for a double production facility or a double workbench facility maxed out you can fiddle around with these a little bit i don't find it's worth the effort so i typically don't Oh, hey, we got a new level. Basically, we got more peeps. Um, whenever one of those things pops up, it will cause your game to slow down, or like the, the speed to slow down. So just keep that in mind. Um, so it looks like we're good on food. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. What do we need? Work is good. Food is good. Services are good. Awesome. We've got spots, uh, meals, excellent. So, our next goal, what does this do? 10% per year, is to get this operational. That'll draw in a bunch of people. And then we'll get a fruit, once this is done and operating, we will grab a fruit farm. What are we missing? We've got... Oh, no wood. Oof. Okay, uh, let's fell some trees. We'll just clear this out for now. That was an oops. Wasn't paying attention to our tree. Yeah, it's, it's important to make sure you're paying attention to that. I'll, I'll be honest, um, I played my first couple of games with this in base, and then I added a few mods that make it easier. Kind of like double production on stuffs. It's still a challenge. It's just easier and if you're looking for a game that's if you enjoy this but are looking for it to be a little bit more relaxing added some mods that uh, just increase the production rates of things um it still maintains all the different difficulties with keeping your people happy and all that but um reducing your degradation rates uh increasing production of different items can help make the game simpler um that's how i enjoy it but for those who want the true challenge, um, don't add those mods, and you will find that this is a very challenging game. A lot of fun. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of cool stuff to do in this. So much cool stuff. Let's see. So we've got the dormitories coming in. What are you looking for happiness-wise work? Uh, fulfillment. Trades, properties. Alright, so they like fisheries. Pits. Gem mines. Okay, so they don't like farming. Cool. We will get you out of the farms as soon as I can. Uh, where was the clay pit? Ah, right down here. So we will get a big old clay pit going uh, down here. And hopefully that will help. Uh, these guys are doing their best, but uh, they are limited in range. So at some point we'll need to expand our janitor services. And oh, eh, I, I do wish that you could see a little bit better. 
as to where these things so this covers a huge portion of the map huge portion so if we want another hunter we'll need to move it basically to the bottom half of the map I'm leaving it at two right now cuz yeah all right so that's the bare bones basics um let's go ahead and move into some of the more not advanced but other things uh, auto employee is kind of hit or miss on some of these but it works all right we're gonna need to fell some more trees trees do grow back over time so yay All right, so right now we've got 36 wood, so we're going to go ahead and get the wood cra crafter up. Um, some of the wood crafter stuff cannot be built on trees, so because your goal is to build trees. Uh, harvest trees, sorry. Oops, 45, 45, there we go. So let's go ahead and stick this near the road. And then the auxiliaries, these do require furniture, which is why I built that furniture thing. Requires a few of these to get the efficiency maxed out, but it gives you an endless supply of wood. So, you know, usually a good idea to have these. There we go, and then we'll just shrink it down, get some of these smaller ones in here. Dude, dude. There we go, 100%. That requires 110 of these chairs um, so we will take a little while and we will need to minimize the number of people working in this uh, once the number of chairs is reached we are going to actually cut down the carpenters because we're going to be sending a bunch more people over to making food because well food is good it's a great way to stay alive and once that's done we'll also get the um, quarries and stuff built so that's the basics to get started. Um, your goal, you'll need to make a uh, carpenter. That's one of the first things you want to make because that gets you the wood production. And you'll want to make a vegetable farm. Additionally, if you're close to water, if you put your main thing, your main kingdom castle thing close to water, you will want to get fishing up and running. Fishing is in the uh, agriculture under aquaculture. And you can see the level of fishing here um, some races do better with fishing additionally if you look at food um, you can look at their food where do you find the food preferences properties ah here it is info so uh, humans like have food preferences of bread fish mushrooms and eggs these guys fish and meat. They're orcs. They like their foods. Uh, these guys have that. Humans, blah, 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 blah. These guys are entirely vegetarian. Well, unless you count eggs. So, yeah. Uh, and it also shows their preferences for mountains and other things. So, uh, the Dondorians do not like wood whatsoever, but they love mountains. Building in mountains. Um, Let's go over mountain stuff real quick. So, oh, oh, perfect timing. So a slaver, you can buy these guys. Now, some races approve of slavery, some do not. Um, it is a good, it is, is it a way, it is a way to boost up your economy, both through labor and through selling slaves using certain technologies you can unlock later. Uh, that's actually in the civics. And under, oops, sorry, under law, and you go to slaver. Uh, you need civics for for that. Basically, you can sell off criminals, which, you know, you can get a lot of criminals. Believe me, I had probably around 200 criminals at a time, minimum, in my last one. The, the gladiator, a full-scale freaking, gl if, if you get to the point where you have the arena, you can get a massive arena. It's basically the size of this field, maybe a little bit larger. As a single item. It's not one you build. You just slap it down. Kind of like the uh, janitor. Yeah. Um, Ten gladiators at a time. I couldn't go through all the people I had sentenced to be executed. 
All right, so this has everything we need. So we are going to drop, oh, turn the auto employee off, drop this down to just five people working in it, just so we have enough to, you know, kind of restock and keep it up a little bit. Uh, we're also going to drop this one down a good bit. Because we need more farms. I am just going to build a second um, grain farm or veggie farm right next to it. And it's nice because you can just shift click and full size, no issues, uh, get that going. Uh, it's also a good time if uh, to build it during winter uh, because the, the spring is when you plant and yeah. So with these two fields, I'll have enough vegetables coming in to supply everything. Um, just a quick overview. I could do, let's see, all. We've got 114 people, and with this we will have uh, 62 working on vegetables and then two more on, you know, the uh, the hunter, but I don't really count that. That's, that's a supplementary thing as I view it. Um, uh, so, the other part of food, you do have the option to do a husbandry. So, in the climate, depending on the climate you choose, you'll have these guys, the aurochs and the lizards. Um, the ontolodotes produce meat, and that little icon right here, that is livestock, kind of wrapped in boxes, yay. Um, these guys produce meat, um cotton and that so the endodons produce a little more meat but these guys also produce cotton you can grow cotton so it's kind of up to you what you want these are basically your pigs these are your sheep the aurochs are cows never understood why you couldn't have cows doing being elsewhere but yeah that's what it is uh, as you can see the cheese we've cut down tweeth but tweeth we've cut down the trees we've cut down have started growing back so this is kind of the, the bare bones basics to get started. You're not gonna die at this point unless you do something really stupid. Um, you've got all the food you need. Not everybody is as happy as they could be, but they'll survive. Um, also, uh, so to get these, the um, hunter will gather them for you, I believe. I believe it's the hunter, if I recall correctly. Yes. So you can build a pasture, get that meat for these guys especially. And it will also produce um, leathers. It doesn't show it, but they will produce leathers uh, when they die. Uh, kind of butchering. So despite the fact that it doesn't show... It doesn't show it here. Uh, here, let's just, let's just make one real quick. Yeah, that's fine. Whoops. Uh, the gate cannot go in the corner. It has to be over to the side. That threw me off for a little bit because for some reason I really, really, really wanted to have it oops, in the corner um, and I could not figure it out. And it's got to be facing out. So we'll get this um, built and it'll show... Ba -ba -ba -bum. Come on. Well, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, for... Gaining your research. Uh, do not spend your research right away. Research must be maintained. So if you spend it, there's also a maintenance cost. So that is a good thing to do. Uh, to gain more infrastructure, you will go... I'm sorry. Gain more knowledge. You'll go to knowledge and go to the library. Libraries produce it... Um, they do produce it without scrolls. So you can gain knowledge, as you can see there, the, the with 25% capacity. So it's not great, but you can do it. Um, real quick, just some stuff that's relatively simple to go over. Um, this ruling is happiness. You see it goes 5, 6, 7. This is cumulative. All of these bonuses are cumulative. Uh, actually, I should show you right here. Uh, nope. Where is it? Ah, there you go. So you can kind of see they've got bonuses there. I'm going to go back to the castle and look at bonuses here. So let's go... Here we go. Bakeries. Um, 
current and max. So you can get all these different things. Um, it does add up. I wish I had that. Hang on. You know what? I'm going to... Oh, nope, can't do that because I didn't... Yeah, let's let's just go over this. So this is going to be a little bit longer. I am going to go ahead and do some knowledge infrastructure. Um, it's not ideal, but we'll just slap it down here real quick. Oh, right. Um, so I like this format a little bit better. This has the same capacity as this. I just like the look better. Uh, we'll just do we'll just do a double tap. There we go. We'll add some shelves in here for storage. Uh, there we go. Uh, come on. Efficiency. There we go. All right, then shrink this. Whoops. Haha. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Okay, doors. Door, door. Door, 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 door. Okay, and we almost have enough, but not quite for that. Let's just boost that up a little bit for a minute. That way we can get the rest of the furniture we need. It's 84, so it won't be too much longer. And we'll have... There we go. Okay. And boom. There we go. All right, let's drop that back down to five. I need workers for other things. Um, so one of the technologies, as soon as you get this up and running, one of the technologies you can grab is... Where'd it go? Paper maker, which improves the performance of, not all workshops, of the libraries and schools. So paper maker, good thing to have. Uh, let's jack that up to max. And we'll have people... Making us knowledge. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to grab... So we've got bartering... Actually, let's do it more simple. Uh, happiness. No, that costs too much. Food production. Perfect. So farming... Sorry. Okay. Woodcutters, perfect. I don't have any existing bonuses on woodcutters. Let's close. Where is my woodcutter? Ah, here it is. So let's unlock this one. That's plus 10%, right? So now woodcutters is plus 10%. Then another 600. Now woodcutters is plus 25% over here. So these are cumulative. So investing in your libraries and whatnot is super important um, because it gives you the kind of technologies that reduce the amount of people you have to send on, like vegetable farms, for instance. Uh, with this, these are all, so you've got plus two, five, 10, 15, yeah, massive amount just off the farming sequence. Then you also get the bonuses from here. So if I wanted to math it out, I could. Let's call this 45%, 50%, 52, 53% here. Uh, 53, 60, 75, 89. Oh, and uh, so yeah, we have to, we can either fight or pay. I'm gonna pay uh, because then we can we we can actually. 10 soldiers. Eh, we'll pay it up. We can sell stuff off. This isn't a huge deal. We can just export some things. Plus, this is not a permanent game. We can sell off the leather. I'll show that in a second. Uh, so yeah, you can see how huge your production bonuses can be. You can keep it from being half your population on food production to... 25-ish percent quarter, which is kind of important because later on you're going to have armies out in the field um, or just your garrison. 
Um, you'll need training stuff for that, but that's in your, sorry, infrastructure military training grounds. Um, so you'll want to make sure you have a garrison of some sort. Um, get that trained up. Pro tip. When you go to the world map and you go to create an army and go to recruit, and you'll select where you're recruiting it. I'm just going to click here. So you can choose to hire mercenaries. Great. Um, get the different names. Shields of Vengeance. One of the mods I had had a lot of fun with some of the Warhammer stuff. It was great. Uh, but recruit. You'll choose from your minions. You can choose the size of the soldiers. Uh, how much training they have. So, yeah, you can see this moving it to max and max melee training. Um, yeah, that's recruitment time of 36 months. Now, they will stay there, and this is separate from your actual population. And, oh, you can see the uh, base stats right here. So, offense skill is 0.5 versus the Dorians versus Garthams. So, um, also like range skill, range power, and accuracy. Um, you can see some of these guys are really bad, like Dundorians. Don't give them a bow. Just don't do it. These guys are the best for ranged. These guys are the best for melee um, skill. However, um, both the Giants... Is it the Giants? Yeah, the Giants and the Garthams have natural armor. Um, you can boost that up, so... With this group, it's going to take 1.2k to armor them up, and it'll give them um, a good bit of armor, um, but still not as much as the innate of the Garthams. So well, it'll make it equivalent to that. So if we bounce this over here, these guys now have 18 armor. So a very tanky um, group of people. All right, anyways. So that's the basics there. Uh, you can just cancel this by hitting disband the entire army. Um, your um, garrison does not go into your army. So if you spend a bunch of money and resources building up a very strong garrison, keep in mind that will not go into your army. So whatever army stuff you're spending down here, like if you're having to spend X to keep your guys maintained, um, that X is not going to be available for your fielded armies out in the main world. So keep that in mind. Um, my last playthrough, I had a really, really, really strong garrison, but it also prevented me from being able to field as massive an army. Um, at one point, I think I had like 10 smithies running to try and support my 8,200-man army. Yeah, looks crazy. All right, so, oh, here we go. So as you can see, despite it not showing it initially, um, oh, we don't have enough livestock. Oh, hang on, let's grab this. And let's drop eggs down and increase livestock. There we go. Um, this will eventually produce um, leathers in addition to the meats. It just takes it a while. It only does it when the animals die. So let's see. Oh, it's a cub. Eventually, we may see that, but and it might be a mod that I had that did that. I hope it's not a mod that did that. That would be awkward. Anyways, um, and you can always import stuff you need. Um, that's under logistics, and you got your export depot. Uh, by hitting the Q button, Q and E, you can expand the, the amount that it can hold. Um, when you do that, you're going to, if you make it this big, you're going to want to assign people to it to make sure they fill it up. Otherwise you're just wasting space. So. Where? Let's see. Oh, right. Import Depot is not your people doing stuff. It's other people dropping it off and then haulers taking it from there. So I'll show you when the export depot has finished its com completed its construction. <laughs> okay, what are you guys pissed about? Oh, you need equipment. And better working environments. Let 
normally I make sure I have more river or I build near a river, but eh. There we go. So you have your employees. So if you're going to sell stuff, for instance, um, I am going to sell off leather. Whoops, leather. They will go grab stuff, put it in here. Um, typically, it's good to put your export, like if you have uh, dedicated warehouses for things. Uh, if you're like me and get late game, you have a dedicated warehouse for just about everything. Um, in addition to your scattereds, uh, for instance, here, it, it's best to have where things need to go, have a warehouse for that. For instance, eateries. Um, we're down over here. And let's say I build a mine to go after... <laughs> ignore that. Let's say we're down here and I build a mine to go after the stone. I'm going to want to put housing and food and everything else near here so people are not running all the way back up here to sleep and eat um, or starve because they're stupid. What I want to do is have a warehouse for stone here. Um, and possibly within that warehouse, also add in some spaces for the various foods and clothings and everything else that people are going to need while they're down here. Um, alcohol as well, because everybody wants drinks. So, it's a lot to keep track of. Once you've played a game or two, it becomes relatively easy to keep track of that. Um... Just remember to always make sure you've got excess food. Excess food can be sold. Um, and you can control how much you sell here. So at this point, uh, we're going to sell nothing. At this point, we will sell a little bit. So if your stock is above X items. So if you're a hardcore calculation person and want to know exactly how much people are eating and all that, you can do that. I'm going to look here at your... Uh, day-to-day -day gains and everything else that we're not buying slaves. Um, so because I'm selling leather, we're good um, on the monies. As you can see, we've almost paid everything off. It do That number goes up. I think I've seen a million at one point. And I was just like, eh, I've got five million in the bank. I'm not going to bother with a fight. That could cost me citizens. Uh, lifespan is a thing in this. So let's take a look at some of our minions. So that's age 34, age 11. Yeah, there's early working ages. Child labor is a thing. Um, I don't know how old these guys can get, um, but different races will live for different periods of time. And mods can't change that actually. And um, I was playing with the racial mod that does all the fantasy race, like the classic fantasy races. So you've got your your elves, orcs, humans, dwarves, etc. Uh, dryads to replace these guys. Um, the elves could live several hundred years versus the humans and orcs living, you know, 60, 70 years type of, I think. I think the orcs actually live less than that. Anyways, so you, you kind of get the feel for how that runs. Um... Oh, that reminds me. So when you build a mine, let's go, let's just go ahead and build this this clay pit right here. Let's try. Okay, that that'll have to do. Oh, that's great. We need metals. Well, we'll just leave it at fifty percent efficiency for now. Yeah, metal is a big deal. You will have to import it at the start um, until you've unlocked smelting. Which is... Where's my smelter? It's workshops. Ah, there it is. So it's easy enough to unlock, but to smelt, you will need ore and coal. So we've got our, what, our tiny little bit of ore. Where was it? Somewhere. There's a tiny bit of ore. And coal. Uh, you can get coal from a charcoalier. I think it was. Finding, yeah, charcoalier. But, yeah. The clay pits and actually mines of any sort are huge drains on your manpower. Uh, you will want to keep an eye on that because 
it will disappear very quickly. Oh, I've got a cat yelling at me. Uh, livestock's another thing um, that you want to keep an eye on. It sells very, very well. So, hmm, maybe this doesn't produce other. I don't know. All right, so that's been almost cleared, but I want to show you just how many people these things can take. If you aren't already familiar. Um, okay, so we've got some grains. Leathers are being sold off. Good, good, good. Uh, planting season is coming up. Good. We'll want to we'll want to add in some um, fruits as well. Fruits sell extremely well, and later on during the game, uh, food becomes an important thing for everyone. You can, if you have an excess of food, you can sell that for a good bit of change. In fact, uh, let's go ahead and take a look right now. So right now, um. It costs 27 to import some of that, that and <coughs> sell it for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Ugh. And then uh, you got fruit at 12, meat at 18, mushrooms, fish, etc. Uh, the metal is expensive, but it's very similar to the ore. So, you know. And do what you will, but I usually just buy the metal straight instead of importing ore, unless, you know, I'm at a point where I need so much metal that I'm buying metal and ore to <laughs> go through as much of it as I can get. Oh, here we go. So this is 179 potential workers. Yeah, that, that that's pretty common for clay pits, stone mines, mines in general. So, um, if you suddenly are gone on workers after building a mine, go check your mine out. You've probably got some workers there that uh, just need to be reallocated to some of the things that you want them to do, like building. Anyways, uh, that is going to be it for this episode. If you want more uh, Songs of Six, um, like how-tos and whatnot, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, right now, I'm just playing through on my own for relaxation purposes it's um, not playing on a hard difficulty or anything and i'm playing with mods so um if you all are interested in seeing something like that let me know and i'll um i'll do a playthrough with uh that it'll probably just i'll probably limit it to 10 episodes max just because <laughs> you gotta conquer this entire area like all this this is not a small map and it is the small Alright, well thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed, like and subscribe, and you have a fantastic rest of your day.